Until now, I've just been using Element as my Matrix client because basically it's the most feature complete and if I want to go and test out any of the weird functionality or more importantly, testing out any of the new functionality, Element is going to be the first one that goes and supports it basically because it's the first party Matrix implementation. But if you don't care about using Matrix like that and you just want to go and use it as a chat app, you want to send images, videos, talk to people as you normally would in a chat app, maybe trying out Neko would make a lot of sense. It's not going to have any features that just blow you away, but it does have a really sleek, modern looking interface. If you're used to working with things like Discord, it's got that same sort of vibe there. Obviously being Matrix, it does have some differences, but it's still fairly easy to get used to. In the general chat area, you have all of the stuff you'd expect from any sort of Matrix client. So we can do things like say, respond to this person right here by clicking on the reply button, and that will show you who you're actually replying to. And we can go and add a bunch of gibberish in here, if we want to go and cancel off that reply though, because I don't feel like replying to that person, we can click off the X here and that will get rid of that while also retaining our message. So if we then go and reply to say another person, that is actually going to keep the message we have there and change who we're actually replying to. We could also go and react to messages as well. So let's say this one right here, I'm gonna go and click on the react button. It shows you a list of emojis and we can go and say, I don't know, put a smiley face on there. If we then go and click on it again, it will then just get rid of that reaction. Nothing really that crazy. You sort of expect this to be in basically any sort of GUI matrix client. I know some of the terminal ones do neglect some of those features like reacting, but this one doesn't. We also have things like doing voice chat and video call. I'm not gonna do that because if I do it, then it will contact like 500 people and that would be quite annoying but it does work now in element you expect to see a user list off the right hand side here like you'd see in something like discord now we can actually access a user list it's just not always shown on the screen so going up to these three dots and clicking on members is where you will actually go and see that so this will show a full list of all the members it doesn't show them all straight away otherwise the list would be quite slow it will load them in as you actually go and scroll and you can't really do anything from this list. So if you are moderating a server, you have to go and do it from this actual screen in here. One really annoying thing about this screen is we can't actually do any moderation from it. So let's say I wanted to go and, I don't know, kick out Asmo, for example. I can't go and right click on their profile picture or their name or their actual at handle here. Nothing's actually going to work. If I want to do any moderation, it has to be done from the actual chat window. So if I wanted to go and say, delete this message here, I can go and right click on it, go to remove message, or I can go and click on the dots on the right hand side here and then do the exact same thing. If I wanted to go and kick or ban a user, what I would have to do is go and click on their name. It'll show me this screen here. I can then go and ban, private message them or kick them. It is a little bit annoying. I would like to have that functionality actually like just being able to right click on their profile picture or something, but that's just how it is. And obviously if you don't have moderation permissions in that room, you won't be able to do things like banning or kicking a user anyway. And one nice little addition that I can't really test right now because no one's actually active is when someone starts typing, you will see typing notifications saying, hey, this person is typing like you would see in Element or in Discord as well. You may have noticed this bar on the left hand side being quite large. The reason why it's like that is because we can actually go and readjust the size. So this should be the maximum size taking up a good portion of the screen, like maybe a quarter of it or so, but we can go and crunch it down so it just shows the icons instead. Whatever you prefer working with, personally, I like to be able to see the messages just so I can see if I even want to bother checking what the most recent message was. Now, if you go and type an at in the chat box down here, you can actually go and autofill in names of people you want to message. So let's say I wanted to message Hum, for example, HU. Now Hum has shown up. I can go and click on his name and it will autofill in the rest for us. We can also go and autofill in emoji as well. So if we go and press the colon key, then it'll show us a list of emoji we can go and use. Let's say I wanted to use something like Australia flag, that one, click on that, and it will put the flag in there. I'm actually missing it from my font, so it's not gonna show it properly, but it, it did pick the right emoji. Now, sadly, unlike Element, there is no support for slash commands. So over in Element, what we can go and do is write slash, and then it'll show us a list of things we can go and include. So a bunch of them are just dumb things like table flip and Lenny faces, but there's a bunch of useful stuff in there as well, like setting a room nickname or setting a topic or joining a room, things like that. Basically, it allows you to go and do all of the stuff you want to do with Matrix, basically by just running commands. 
It's not a big deal, but I would certainly like to see it. It would add a lot of functionality into Neko. And we also have a room switcher. So pressing control K is going to bring up this list of all the rooms you're currently in, as well as your private messages. And then if we start typing in one, it'll let us actually go and jump to that. So let's say I wanted to go over to my programming one, start typing in that. It'll be at the top. We can click it. And now we're over there. I believe Element also supports this feature as well, along with a bunch of other Matrix clients. But I do still have to mention it because it is a really cool feature and I miss it when it's not there. One of the issues I had with Element early on is I felt like the right hand side of the screen where you have all of your things like your user list and stuff like that, I felt like that was always really cluttered. I feel like this does a much better job by just sticking that in a context menu. Granted, there is less functionality in here, but it does add more room to add a bunch of extra functionality without having a bunch of buttons like this and they get really confusing to work out exactly how to actually navigate it. Now there is a settings menu in the bottom left down here, as well as a settings menu inside of the context menu in the top right. So the one down the bottom left here, this is going to be settings for the application itself. Whereas the one in the top right is going to be settings for the room you're currently in. So we can do things like set a new name for the room, we can set the topic, we can go and set how we want our notifications to work. I usually have mine on mentions only because I really don't care about seeing like general notifications and having it on mute is going to make it so when people try to contact me, I will never see it. So mentions only is a good middle ground. We can set the room access, the encryption, and we can also see the internal ID as well as the room version. Now, if you go over to Element and look at room settings, there is so, so much more you can go and modify. So this is a very basic set of configuration. It's not perfect. If you need to moderate a room, Neko probably isn't the client you want to be using. But it is enough for general people. Another way to access the room settings is just clicking anywhere along the top bar here and it will go and open it. I presume that's a bug because if you go and hover over the actual image for the room, that's the only place where your cursor changes into a hand. So I'm guessing that's the place that you're supposed to be able to click to actually go and open that. I don't know if that is the case or if this entire thing is supposed to be clickable, but it feels buggy. One thing you may have noticed about this is every single person in the room has a color assigned to them. I think this is a unique color. There are some colors in here which look quite similar, but I'm pretty sure those are different shades of green. So because this is a GUI application, you effectively have access to infinite colors. Yes, there is a limit of 16 million, but in reality, you're never going to have a matrix room that has anywhere near that many users, so it's a effectively infinite. Now Matrix has this functionality known as communities, which are basically a rudimentary implementation of what Discord does with servers. Basically the end goal would be to have some way to do community-wide moderation, but the current implementation isn't great, so they're going to be replaced with something better. Now Neko does actually support the current implementation of communities. It's just a very rudimentary implementation of the rudimentary implementation. So you can go and sort the rooms you're in based on whether they're inside of a certain community. You can't do things like leave a community or join a community or even see the community homepage, but it's still better than nothing and having this grouping here does make it slightly more convenient. However, if you're not actually in any communities, if you go into your settings and click on the group sidebar selector right here, that will then go and disable that so you no longer have to see it. One feature that would be really nice is maybe an extra button on the left hand side here to show nothing but your direct messages because right now if you want to see those, you have to be in the all room section and basically you're going to see all of the rooms you're in, including the ones that aren't the direct messages. So finding those is going to be a little bit annoying. I know this is something possible to do because over in element this is something that's actually done now let's say we want to go and join or create a new room so clicking on this big plus down here is going to give you those functions so let's go and join a room first and you're given this prompt right here now this is a little bit annoying so over in element if you click join a room it's going to give you the option to actually search for a new room in this case, though, you need to actually know the room ID or the alias, which makes it much, much harder to actually use. I would like to have the option to actually go and search for rooms. I don't know how you would implement it or how difficult it would actually be, but it would be really, really useful to have. Now, as for creating a room, we can basically do everything we need to do. Setting the name, setting the topic, setting the alias, setting the room visibility, so private or public, 
setting it to be a private chat or a public chat or a trusted private chat or even setting it as a DM. Now it doesn't give you an option here to go and enable encryption straight away, but we saw earlier that we can go and enable that after the chat has been created. And I believe the reason for that is right now, Neko doesn't properly support encryption. So when you go and log into Element, you'll get a prompt to actually go and share your encryption keys with that login. In this one though, you have to go and set it up manually, which means that for me, if I click on this encrypted chat right here, currently I can't actually see anything in here. It is a work in progress and I certainly do hope some progress actually is made. Make it so a prompt appears and you can just easily do it like you can over an element because that is one of the major features that I really, really like about Matrix. While I don't use it for my general just public chats that I have, you know, bridged over with Discord because there's no point encrypting a Discord chat. If I want to have a private message with someone, I am always going to encrypt that. Now, when you first open up this application, it's going to look a little bit different, mainly because by default, it's not going to have things like the dark mode enabled. If you would like to enable that or just generally change the theme, going into the user settings and scrolling down to the interface section, you can go and set the scale factor, you can set the font size. So if we go and increase the font size to say 20 and go back, this will partially do it. So one problem this application does have is when you modify the font size, it will modify the text window, but it won't actually do the rest of it until you actually go and relaunch the application. It's just a weird bug it has with updating. Just keep that in mind in case you notice that it doesn't seem to be updating stuff properly. Now, something interesting has actually happened here. Because the font is so large, it assumes that I'm on a mobile device and has forced itself into the touchscreen mode. So this works basically the same way, but the interface has just been swapped around a bit to just make it work properly on a touchscreen device. So if we want to go and fix that, let's go and modify the font, drop it back down to something a bit more reasonable. Let's say, I don't know, 14, for example. Quit out of that. Relaunch the application. And now it should be back in the correct mode. Now, we can go and force it into touchscreen mode whenever we want to. I've just noticed that actually activating this slider doesn't seem to do anything, at least on my system. So if we're going to actually relaunch it, it still seems to be exactly the same. So I'm not exactly sure what the deal is here. Now, if you'd like to install this yourself, head over to the Neko Reborn GitHub, not Neko. Neko is the archived version of the repo. This is a remade version that's still being maintained. Head down to around the middle and you'll see whether it's actually supported on your distro. Ultimately though, if it's not in the standard repos, just go and manually install it or even install the flat pack if that's what you would prefer. Ultimately, this interface isn't anything special, but one great thing about it is it's actually a native application. Element is a web application that just runs in Electron. So if you really care about not running Electron applications and you still want to use Matrix, but you don't want to use one of the terminal clients, this might be a pretty good choice to go with, to be honest. So let me know your thoughts on this down below. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Mitchell, Peter, D, Stephen, Thuru, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, Libra Pale, that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you'd like to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. I am spinning on my chair, and I'm going to end the video right now. So, I'm out.